Well, hey everybody, John Ritlin here, and this is a Raw Sami Zose review. Unintentionally made about Sami Zayn, not realizing he was going to be such a big factor on this show, and not necessarily in a good way. Same with Baron Corbin, Kevin Owens to an extent, Shane McMahon, <clears throat> and a few others. Let's be honest, Super Showdown was an absolute shit show. I am glad that the talent, the roster, everybody got back safely. Especially Natty and Alexa, since they weren't allowed to wrestle there. I'm glad everybody got back safely. I feel bad they had to travel and then work house shows and then work tonight. So I'm sure they were all super, super tired. <clears throat> the women saved this goddamn show. Now, there were a couple other matches that weren't that bad. The matches that were good actually elevated this one a little bit, but still wasn't a very good show. It, it really wasn't. And by the way, before we get into the review, the Pride shirt. Celebrate Pride Month. Support, support your LGBTQ friends. <clears throat> Honestly, they're just adults. Wanting to be accepted for who they are. So seriously, fucking do that and quit being homophobes. Anyway, let's get... Oh, look, we start with Super Showdown recaps. Fucking Christ. Vibrant, progressive country. The women couldn't wrestle there, but whatever. We're locked in for another eight and a half years while WWE is, so therefore the fans are. <coughs> Those that don't watch it, fine. But I'm going to continue to watch them because I enjoy ranting about the stuff, at least as long as I do YouTube videos. I mean, which is going to be as long as I want and as long as you guys want to see my content. So, yeah, we get Rollins coming down, and Cole says, Look at that smile. Wow, isn't that cool? God, Cole, I fucking hate you. I fucking hate you, Cole. I know he's being overproduced, but seriously. <laughs> and uh, though Rollins said at one point, uh, Brock has been in WWE since 2002. Apparently, March or April of 2004 to April of 2012 did not exist in Seth Rollins' mind. Those eight years, nope, didn't mean jack fucking shit. Except he was in New Japan for a bit... <laughs> He was in the UFC, and then he came back to WWE because diverticulitis took a lot of ability away from him, and oh, he needed money because Brock's a fucking idiot that can't do anything besides earn oodles and oodles and oodles and oodles and poodles of money. It'd be weird to see a poodle made of money. I now need to see that. But moving on, <clears throat> he was not in WWE since 2002. Just fucking hell. I mean, who the fuck gave Rollins that line? Corbin is excruciatingly boring. Now, he's not so bad between the ropes. He doesn't generate good heat with me. It's go-away heat. That that just is what it is. The crowd boos and keeps moving and keeps moving and cutting them off. He's like, I have all night. We don't, Corbin. The ratings are going to go down. By the way, the NBA Finals are currently going on as I cut this review, so I can only imagine what the ratings are now. And, <clears throat> of course, Corbin at one point says, incompetent. Not incompetent, but incompetent. New word. Okay, whatever. You know, kids are creating all this new slang, so whatever. And <laughs> Corbin says, because of what happened to Super Showdown, I get my re I get my rematch at my choosing. Is Corbin back to running Raw? Did did they just forget about all that? Just <clears throat> all the bullshit that happened last year when he was a terrible, terrible authority figure, and he was. Whether he was booked that way or not, even do do not bring Corbin back as the goddamn GM constable, whatever the fuck it is. Do <laughs> we don't need that? Um, he gets to pick his own special guest referee, because apparently he's running the goddamn show again. No one fucking knows what's going on. And Zayn actually comes down and says to Rollins, I like you as a person, but Corbin would make a good universal champion. Further proving that Sami Zayn, apparently in, you know, the midst of getting that double shoulder surgery, also had a lobotomy. And maybe a, an entire lobotomy, maybe, you know, just had everything removed. Maybe he had his fucking heart removed, because there's no way... A man with a brain and a heart could actually fucking believe that Corbin would be a good universal champion. If you guys believe it, fine. That, that's okay. I don't agree, but whatever. Um, Sami Zayn looks done and looks like he wants to leave. And maybe that's just the idea of his of his gimmick and his character, but I don't know. <laughs> Rollins, or no, uh, Rollins is out there still, and then Owens comes down and says, I agree with you, Sami. Thank you, Kevin. You're welcome. That was a funny little exchange there. We think of Rollins and Owens in the main event because Rollins can just make matches. Whatever, and then he walks by the three guys with a chair. <laughs> you want to take me on? Whatever. He's got injured ribs. We're not going to beat him up. Whatever. Okay, Usos versus Revival versus Hawkins and Ryder. Uh, when were the Usos added? Because I just remember... Correct me if I'm wrong, but on WWE, I don't remember the Usos being included. I thought it was just the Revival and Hawkins and Ryder. Now, maybe I misread the stuff on WWE.com. I don't know. <laughs> I was at work very busy at the time. But then we get Lars versus Team doing a good Lucha thing, Lucha House Party, and it's an elimination handicap match, and Lars wins within, like, five minutes. One, Lars was being a careless twat here, throwing Kalisto, which, look, I don't like Kalisto, but I don't want the fucker injured. I mean, <laughs> he tossed him very poorly. He tossed Lince, Lince, Lanny Rhino's goddamn neck. Not like Kota Ibushi at uh, New Japan Dominion. This was unintentional. 
Coda hates his neck. I'm sure that Lince Dorado wants to keep his neck. Um, Kalisto gets eliminated. Uh, Lince gets eliminated. And Grand Metal League uh, doesn't get eliminated for a bit because Lars goes on the offense and then beats up Lince and, again, throws him on his neck and then he beats Grand Metal League. And this match did nothing for anybody. I'm sorry. It didn't. It didn't make me care about Lars anymore. It didn't do anything. This is the one bad match. Well, the, <laughs> the first match and the last match were the bad matches of the night. Um, but yeah, he uses a flying headbutt for three. Cool, whatever. More 24-7 bullshit with Truth and Carmella escaping into an elevator along with EC3, Cedric Alexander, Slater, and Drake. <clears throat> they get stuck in an elevator without a ref. It it's like the movie Devil, except it's more shit, and if you saw Devil, Devil was really shit. It had potential as a Twilight Zone episode. And this was almost done GTV style, where it was like a security camera thing, and they're all stuck there, and... <clears throat> Over the night, we keep seeing more stuff. We get Lacey and Becky in a split-screen sit-down interview. Do not keep fucking doing this because this doesn't play to the strengths of Becky and Lacey, who are good talkers, but these split-screen interviews don't do any good for anybody. I was there at one of the <coughs> SmackDowns, I think. The SmackDown, I think it was SmackDown, for Natty and Nikki when they were feuding. And it's just awkward. I mean, Natty, Natty's a decent talker. Nikki couldn't talk to save her goddamn life. And I mean Nikki Bella, by the way. This... This wasn't very good. It did not play to either woman's strength. And I'm excited to see this feud. Um, of course, you know, uh, Lacey at one point does say, Sm you know, I smell I smell the fear or whatever. You sure that wasn't because somebody forgot to douche? It was probably Kevin Dunn because Kevin Dunn is a fucking douche. Uh, we then get Nikki and Alexa. Alexa manipulating Nikki Cross. Look, I don't mind that they're using Nikki Cross. I'm glad, but I'm sorry. I don't think the storyline is going to work because it's going to do one of two things. One, Alexa and Nikki are going to become unlikely allies, even though Alexa's trying to, um, you know, manipulate Nikki. Or, it's like, and then they're going to win the tag titles, and then they're going to split up, and then they're going to feud. Or, it's going to turn out that Alexa is uh, manipulating Nikki Cross, and then it's going to turn out almost like the Nia Jax storyline. I mean, hopefully without Nikki Cross injuring anybody. And we're just going to get Nikki Cross eventually getting a win, and then it's going to do nothing. I mean, Alexa is one of the golden girls that they have, and I'm not talking about the old TV sitcom. I just, I, I can't see this benefiting anybody. They're using Alexa, they're using Nikki, at least they're using Nikki. Hopefully this means that Nikki will be a bigger star. But time has proven that <clears throat> feuds with Alexa, no one really comes out looking like a bigger star. I mean, they really don't. Remember the whole Bailey thing? Oh, don't worry, we're going to get to that. Um, she does say at one point, Bailey isn't who you think she is. More manipulating, more of this bullshit. And <laughs> at one point, Corey says, you know, about I didn't take Nikki as a hugger. Renee says, did you call her a hooker? I said a hugger. I don't know why that was funny. That was one of the few good lines that Corey had. Corey is an insufferable twat on commentary, and not even in a good way. Put him on Raw or SmackDown. Go to a two-person commentary team for all the shows. I mean, except for the pay-per-views. You want to bring people in for the pay-per-views, that's fine. But just for the TV, you do not need three-person You don't need three-person commentary for... Um, for NXT, we don't need Beth Phoenix there. Sorry, Beth just isn't that good. And she oversteps on, or steps on Morrow's uh, lines. And while Morrow isn't everybody's cup of tea, sorry, Beth just isn't the answer. She ain't it, Chief. I feel so goddamn white saying that. We have a two-man commentary team on uh, NXT UK. Look, having women on commentary, Renee, if you want to do that, fine. But just, you can't have three-person commentary teams. You can't. Take Corey off of Raw, or put Corey on Raw, put Renee on SmackDown with Tom Phillips, something like that, and just do that. Just something. I'm sorry, they gotta do something else with the commentary. We then get Ms. TV with Joe. It's a possible U.S. title feud. The father has brought up all this bullshit. We then get... <coughs> we get Ms. talking about the Coochina Clutch. Ms., what you and Maurice do in your bedroom is your own business. We don't need to hear about that. We don't need to hear about, you know, how she grabs your baguette, or how you grab whatever the fuck, whatever the fuck, you know, a pastry would be, or a pie would be over in France. Uh, what's the French-Canadian pastry? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, I'm talking about pie. That's what I'm talking about. We get, then Braun comes out, he says a few words. Lashley, he wants a U.S. title. It is 2006 again. That's the last time he was U.S. champion. Ricochet comes out and says a couple words. Cesaro blindsides him. We get a brawl, we get a brawl, and I bet you're never gonna guess what fucking happened next. We get a random six-man tag match. Ow. This, look, the match was good, but stop with just having these brawls and, oh, all of a sudden we're going to make a six-man tag match. Look, all these guys worked well together, despite the fact that um, Miz is a good entertainer. He's not really a great work. Well, he, okay, he's a good worker. He's not a very good wrestler. 
But he had Miz, Ricochet, and Braun versus Lashley, Joe, and Cesaro. It was fine. It worked well. There were some good exchanges. But in the end, you had a bad 630. Like, Cesaro was laying down. Ricochet did the 630. And Ricochet just crashes right into Cesaro's knees. Like, fucking ouch. Cesaro was limping. He was being helped out. I hope he's okay. I hope it was just a bruise. It was just a tweak or something. He's going to be okay. Because if Cesaro gets injured at this point, if he's out for any length of time, he's almost 40. I don't know if Vince is really going to use him much anyway. But Vince might just look at him like, oh, he's always getting injured. Even though... It's as much on Ricochet, even though I, he didn't intend to, it was badly aimed. It wasn't as bad as the shooting star Preston Kidman did that ended up injuring Chavo Guerrero, but still, it was pretty bad. So, hopefully Cesaro's okay. And then we get Charlie interviewing Corbin. <clears throat> Corbin is apparently in charge again, saying, I'm going to, you know, do interviews with people that are going to be the special guest referee. What the fuck? Um... Uh, Renee, you know, says a line when Becky comes out, it's time for a different, uh, different mentality. I can pop for that pun. <clears throat> I like that. Um, and then Michael Cole, you know, saying a line that cannot make him sound like a badass for stomping grounds. It's time to kick ass and take names or fist snatch and take brains. I don't know what the fuck this is. And by the way, stomping grounds is in 13 days. I am not going to go. I'm not, it's in Tacoma. I am going to go to a new Japan, <clears throat> uh, theme show. Super J Cup, that uh, the tickets go on sale June 24th. They're doing some West Coast shows, so two in California, one in Tacoma. I'm going to go to that one. I can't invest enough time or enough money in WWE despite all the talents that I like. I just can't. Um, Alexa and Lacey versus Bailey and Becky. Wild card rules city, bitch. Raw's Alexa versus SmackDown's Bailey. And then Lacey and Becky. And <clears throat> look, oh boy. Corey says, at one point, I've watched a lot of sports entertainment recently. Hashtag sports entertainment enthusiasts. That is something that WWE said in a tweet. And wrestling died in WWE just a little more. Um, Corey says, at one point, he couldn't remember something. His memory's a little fuzzy, Renee. Uh, does your widow brain hurt from all the concussions, Corey? Is that what it is? I, I do deal with concussions. I'm obviously not a wrestler. But Corey <clears throat> kind of deserves the berating he gets for... Not even being a heel, but just being a flat-out dick. And to me, it doesn't come across as him being a good heel. He just comes across as being a jackass. And then we get a bad landing on the moonsault. I mean, and not, not that Lacey hurt anybody. Not that Lacey hurt anybody, but I was afraid she hurt herself because she missed the moonsault. Well, she hit it, but Becky moved out of the way. Uh, we then get a woman's right. And then a woman's right to Bailey, which Bailey had to s sit on the ropes an inordinate amount of time. So there was a missed time spot. I'm not blaming anybody. It's just a missed time spot. <clears throat> and then Lacey covers Bailey for three. So, okay, at least Lacey got away and Lacey looked pretty strong. That was fine. That was a decent match. Um, we then get Shane. Uh, has Sam He decides to have Sammy be the ref. So, and then Shane repeats everything that Sammy just said to him almost word for word. So Shane is a sweaty parrot. Hashtag Shane is a sweaty parrot. Um, Heyman's presence... <laughs> Yeah, Heyman's out there, and his presence victimizes the audience. Look, Heyman is only doing what he can in his role, but he's just not interested anymore. He's just not fucking interesting. It's fucking brutal. It is fucking atrocious. <laughs> um, it went on forever. He's saying that he won't say when Lesnar's going to cash in. Good. Can you just have Lesnar get the briefcase up to somebody else? Sorry, Lesnar is not interesting as the Money in the Bank winner. He's just fucking not. <laughs> no more Mr. Nice Jew. Okay, we know you're Jewish, Heyman. You don't need to say that. This did go on forever. More 24-7 uh, shit. <clears throat> EC3 says, if we're in here much longer, we're going to have to resort to cannibalism. Ethan Cannibal the Third. That should be a new shirt. By the way, I hate elevators. <clears throat> I don't know why these guys didn't take the stairs. But then again, taking the stairs didn't work out so well for Jimmy Snooker's ex. I would say I'm sorry for that, but, that one, but I'm not. Also, you had one woman and five guys in an elevator or whatever. I saw a movie like this once. By mistake, of course. And yeah, then we get the Iconics having two jobbers, facing two jobbers, two enhancement talents. They were called Lisa Lace and Aaliyah Mia, or Maya. Um, well, it happened. I mean, the Iconics won. It's just, this isn't doing anything for the Iconics necessarily, because they did this, what, shortly after Mania? And this is almost two months later, and now they're doing this. They lose almost every single match, at least on TV, with the titles not on the line. I know they don't have a lot of women that are formed as tag teams. Do something with them. Have random pairings, this kind of stuff. Build up some stories. Have them appear in NXT and face some women. <clears throat> something. 
The Iconics can matter more, make the tag titles matter more. Sure, they need to sign some more women. I was talking to my friend Valena about this, but they, they need more women. <clears throat> but they also need to utilize more of the women they have on Raw and SmackDown. Mickey is currently injured, but they can do better with some of them. Dana and Natty, fuck, just put somebody out there. The Iconics can have good matches and make this and make these titles mean something. And then we get um, Corey apparently is jealous because these uh, these enhancement talents can wrestle. He's burying them, but he's jealous because they can wrestle and he can't because Corey was bad at life and sucks at life, and that's why he can't wrestle anymore, and that's why his little brain hurts, and why I don't have any sympathy for the dumb fuck. <laughs> Sorry, I don't. I know that uh, uh, wrestling is a tough life, but. The guy kind of, the guy again deserves the fucking hate he gets. So we get recaps of Shane beating Reigns. Drew can't beat Reigns. Nobody else can. Elias can't beat Reigns. But no, Shane, the best in the world, can beat him. Can you tell I didn't really like some of this shit? We then get more 24 7 elevator stuff. Drake apparently is getting married soon. Good on Drake. Good for him. AC3 is like, you didn't, inv you didn't invite me? You're the best man. I don't know why that was funny. Shane's celebration with Drew. Drew deserves so much fucking better. This was abysmal. This was absolutely, it was abysmal. It was just bad. It was just more bullshit. Shane does not need to be on TV anymore. I don't care who takes him out at this point. Have AOP take him out. Have AOP, the Viking Raiders, <coughs> and everybody just throw him in a dumpster and take that dumpster away. And don't put the dumpster in a, don't have the dumpster catch fire like when he threw Kane in there. In 2003, don't have him actually compacted. Just get him off TV. Just get Shane off TV. It's not even effective heel heat because it's taking away from what Drew could be doing, Elias could be doing. Everybody's getting drugged down by Shane. Nobody is benefiting from being with him. This is not 1999. This is not, you know, 2003, 2000, whatever. This is not Shane at his peak. This is not even Shane... <clears throat> You know, being able to give the rub to anybody, he doesn't mean anything other than being just a joke. And he's taking up too much time. More Super Showdown recaps of fans being happy and Mansoor <coughs> winning. The guy that apparently, according to video, inspired, you know, did egg, egged Rhea on to say something that Mansoor was just too, that, you know, felt, but he wanted Rhea to say it because he didn't have the guts to actually show how much of a horrible person he might be. But whatever, everybody was happy there. Hooray! <laughs> Usos versus The Revival versus Hawkins and Ryder Triple Threat Tag Titles match. The Revival won. It was a good match for what it was. Hawkins and Ryder meant nothing as tag champions. I forgot that they even were tag team champions. I forgot the tag titles existed on Raw. But The Revival won. They won the meaningless tag titles. I can't wait for The Revival to lose them at SummerSlam in the kickoff match and then not mean anything again. And... The Revival, by the way, were out earlier with Shane McMahon celebrating and couldn't drink champagne, but then they were all of a sudden drinking champagne. <laughs> okay. Rollins talks about the main event. More uh, elevator shit. Drake and EC3 and more marriage stuff and talk and everything. Not them getting married, but whatever. I ain't going to shame if they, if they were to do that. Out of the elevator, we get more 24-7 stuff and Carmella and Truth drive back in the elevator. Because everybody was still waiting outside an elevator that was locked that evidently just locked and just stayed there. Didn't raise up, didn't lower. <laughs> Whatever. It's like Gibbs from NCIS just hit the thing and then had a meeting with somebody. If you've seen NCIS, you know what I'm talking about. Firefly Funhouse. Nails up a sign. Abandon all hope. Ye who enter here. Bray Wyatt does, that is. Um, he listens to his gloves and then has Rambling Rabbit, who apparently is alive again. <clears throat> I don't care for the Firefly Funhouse, by the way, if I haven't made that clear. The Rabbit's trying to tell people about what's going on in the Funhouse, and then Bray Wyatt knocks him down and hammers him. And then says, Yow, it's like, here, try some of Yowie Wowie Rambling Rabbit's Bohemian Breakfast Spread. I don't know what this is. I don't care. I get Bray credit for coming up with as much stuff as he can and trying and having a whole bunch of gusto about it. I don't care about this. I don't care. I don't. I hate it. I fucking hate it. And then Rollins versus Owens. Zane is the outside referee. Kept interfering. John Cone couldn't do his goddamn job. This was overbooked. Messy. WCW bullshit. <clears throat> Bad WCW bullshit, by the way. Um, he caused a DQ because Rollins eventually dived out and, you know, hit a dive on, a suicide dive on Owens, and then Zayn got clipped, and then Zayn was like, pulled the referee out, and then decided, wait a second, the referee's down, I pulled the ref out, I'm going to get in there, and then Rollins hit him, and then he caused a DQ, <clears throat> and then Rollins was bleeding, Corbin attacks Rollins, he gets ran off, Zayn gets laid out with a whole bunch of chair shots, wherever the Saudi Arabian government were applauding, of course, because they want to do that uh, Sami Zayn, because the Saudi Arabian government are horrible fucking people. 
That was the end of it, by the way. Rollins standing tall, and I don't know what the fuck they're doing here because <clears throat> whatever. It wasn't C minus, C minus. I know it sounds like I really hate this C minus for this reason. The women got three matches on this show. By and large, even though I don't like what they're doing to Alexa and Nikki, because I think it's going to turn badly. Hey, right now, C minus. It was below average, <clears throat> but it was better than it had been. Some of the matches are good, quite a bit of his shit. But anyway, see minus pull up there. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritland. I'll be back for SmackDown tomorrow.